What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, well, we're back with a super flex rookie draft mock this time. So I know some of y'all were a little disappointed we didn't do it on the first go round, but you know, some that's people. Somewhere. That's right. Some people still just mess with non super flex. I like to do both. What uh, kind of swine doesn't do super flex <laughs> with all the drafts <laughs> they'd ever done before and will ever do again? Well, we got one here for you now. And uh, obviously, we got the other mock. So a lot of what we did in that is going to be the same and dictate how in what order and how we would take the players and some of the trading obviously we'll talk a little bit about some trading because there is a little bit of added value in this one so there's maybe a couple different spots where you can look to trade back to uh, that would be a little different in the first one but we're not going to spend a ton of time um, going through all the picks of all the other players we're just here to kind of talk about the quarterbacks where they go how you should take them and, and all that kind of stuff um, so I hope you guys enjoy it you guys ready to roll CC. All right. So this is a Patreon mock that we did uh, with our patrons. Um, so we got a live draft board here. Shout out to the pleasure, Chesters. Shout out to them, boys. And the first pick off the board is Clyde Edwards. Killer. <laughs> oh, this sounds like sounds like a good umpire name. I haven't uh, seen that show. I gotta I gotta put add it to the repertoire. All right. So the burning question is we can run through these first four picks kind of real quick. So it's Clyde Edwards, it's Joe Burrow, it's Jonathan Taylor, and it's Tua Tonga Vailoa, and then the three other running backs, J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, and DeAndre Swift. The big question always is in Superflex is do you have to take the quarterback first? Um, and I'm going to debate a little bit against, against that, but to start off with, um, the biggest issue with the quarterback is is the high level of currency it 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 gets in in a super flex league. The big issue is is when you're trying to trade for a quarterback because you don't have a second one and maybe or maybe even a third one. Um, it's really hard to get one without trading them another quarterback or some massive overpay um, of a of a couple different skill positions because they they are hard to come by. The super flex kind of the point. I think down the road was to elevate the quarterback's um, value. And that's what it does. So if you don't have two, it's pretty hard to get by. Um, now it's not to say you can't trade for an aging veteran, like a Phil Rives or um, a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees or any of those kind of guys. Um, but, depending on who you're negotiating with, you're, you might still have to be overpaying. Sometimes you can get those guys for a little cheaper. It just depends on who has them and, and what their team's like and what they're trying to do with those guys. Or the other option is, is going after somebody like just let's get Sam Darnold, who hasn't maybe gotten – rose – top the mountaintop that he could get to. So if you believe in a Sam Darnold, you could go get a guy like that and still maybe slightly overpay for him, but there's still value to be gained out of a Sam Darnold or Dwayne Haskins is a good example right now of, if, you know, I like Dwayne Haskins. I think he could play. There's no value on Dwayne Haskins. You could probably go get him without really overpaying and there could be a huge upswing for you. Now, if you're looking for a guarantee, which you know, if you're hunting for a second quarterback, you know, you're going to have to overpay and, and get one of those guys. What do you got, Jay Wayne? Well, just to add to the difficult, the, the, the difficulty that there is trying to acquire an, a quarterback is like, those are good examples of guys to maybe go after that, that, that have room to, for their value to increase. But the problem is they have to be on a team that the, the that guy has, has an has, excess. He has he, two, you know? and they want to get rid of the third or the fourth. Right. The way you go about trading for a quarterback in Superflex is you go look at the, all the rosters, and you try and find someone that has more than two. And there's probably not very many that have two or three that are right. all good, are good enough to start, that, and they're going to deal you one. So it's just hard even finding a trade yeah. partner, much less a guy to actually acquire. Which was part of the reason why I went with a Sam Darnold and a, and a Haskins, because maybe those are guys that are in their third quarterback position. And even then, it's still hard to get them from somebody because you do need a quarterback for bye weeks and, and injuries to the quarterbacks, even though they happen a lot less. Less, um, still can't occur. Um, 
So I understand that. I understand the value of those guys. But real quick, obviously, you know, Burrow didn't go in the top of this one, but in a lot of uh, start or rookie mocks, you're gonna you're gonna see Burrow and Tua going one two, and you it mixes in a little bit here or there. But a lot of people will argue that you need to take the quarterbacks because of that value. All right, if we just take it back to 2019, we'll go to 2018, we'll go to 2017, and then I'll discuss, you know, t- the top six quarterbacks right now. Uh, 2019, Kyler Murray, 1-1 one, one in, in Superflex. This is a uh, Fantasy Pros article where they did a, a staff uh, draft with a bunch of different guys uh, over there. So a well-respected place. Kyler Murray, Dwayne Haskins, 1-2. Kyler Murray, 1-1. One, one. And then... After Dwayne Haskins, Harry, Josh Jacobs, Monty, Sanders, DK, AJ Brown, Devo, Paris, Hollywood, and then here comes Drew Locke and Daniel Jones. Um, so Dwayne Haskins is the guy that I was just talking about. Hey, value fell out. You could go get him. So that didn't really work out for you. I still have faith in, in Haskins. Let's go to 2018. Baker won one in some people's eyes. A lot of people said you still had to take Saquon, which you should have. Baker went one, two. So then you throw Rosen and Darnold into the mix. Rosen, I mean, the book's not closed on Rosen, but it's going to be pretty hard to climb out of that hole and make it worth anywhere you paid for him in the top. You know, this was a DLF article of of a draft that they did. Uh, So Baker at one, two, I believe Rosen was one, three or one, four, and Darnold was one, five or one, six. Um, So you hadn't necessarily reaped the benefits on that. And now after that, Lamar Jackson, late, First round, early second round pick, Josh Allen, second round pick. So more value right there. Those guys are panning out right now. Not to say they will long term, but right now one of those guys at the top of the mountaintop for Superflex. And the other guys, you know, finished third, I think, out of all the quarter. What, did anybody know Josh Allen's actual fantasy quarterback finish last year was pretty high? Uh, 2017, go back here. Uh, I mean, it might have been 10 or 12 on points per game. Yeah, um, okay. But still pretty good. I mean, if that's points per game with Jeff Driscoll and um, Stafford in front of him. Okay. So total overall points. Probably a maybe. lot higher. A lot higher. Uh, go back to 2017. Fake pigskin rookie mock. A lot of big names uh, that did this rookie mock. I'm not going to name them all uh, because it doesn't really matter. But they're prevalent names. You can Google it right now if you wanted to. You can 2017. Uh, super flex ADP or rookie mock or whatever. And you could probably find what I'm looking for and see those names. Um, Deshaun Kaiser at one eight was the first quarterback off the board. Then Deshaun Watson at one ten. Patrick Mahomes at two six. Patrick Mahomes again, two six and is at the top of um, the mountaintop of super flex ADP. Not to say that Mahomes didn't maybe go at the end of the first round and some, but in no cases was he going at the top of that draft. Um, so then just quickly going back, I kind of talked about it a little bit, but then if you talk about, let's just say the top six quarterbacks right now, according to DLF, May ADP, coming off the board. It's Mahomes, not drafted in the first round of Superflex, uh, at least at the very top of Superflex like some of these quarterbacks are now. Lamar Jackson, not drafted at the top of the first round, probably most likely the back end of the top of the second. Kyler Murray, drafted at the top end now it's been one year last year you could have called, said baker mayfield in this exact same spot he was number three uh currently quarterback 10 so i believe in kyler i think kyler is good he has an added dimension with the legs i think he's fairly safe i'm not knocking kyler murray i'm just saying next year he could easily be 10 um but right now he's he's a pretty high pick deshaun watson again not a top end super flex pick dak prescott he was like a fourth round actual startup pick that they, I couldn't find the ADP and the data to tell me exactly where he went in Superflex, but I could pretty much guarantee you that there was no way Dak Prescott was going at the top of Superflex drafts. Russell Wilson, same deal, third, fourth round pick in actual draft. Like, nope, they had always had Matt Flynn, who they just paid a ton of money to. Nobody was taking Russell Wilson at the top of their Superflex drafts at that point like I just I, I, I can't say for certain but I'm I'm pretty certain that that was not happening um, the next guy on the list is Carson Wentz he's down at seven after his second year in the league when he was on his MVP chase yes he was probably up a little higher but these things can fluctuate I'm all in on Wentz Wentz is typically in a super flex startup where I'm buying my first quarterback I want the value of around one quarterback on the list late pick we lost you for a second talking about Wentz there, but I think we get the gist of it. He's a, a good value, and you said that's right where you want to start buying. 
Right. That's um, where I want to buy on Wentz. And then let's, you know, Daniel Jones was 121 ADP last year. Now he's up to 53 and nobody wanted him last year in start eight and uh, super flex drafts. Um, right. He's above Jerry Judy right now. Um, and if we look at let's who else am I looking for? Jared Goff was QB seven and nineteen. He's down to QB fourteen. He was a top end pick in um, whenever Wentz came out. They were right back to back. Drew Locke last year was one nineteen. Um, he's at sixty nine right now. So there may be a case for these guys who are a little later in these superflex being the actual value and. Quarterbacks are the toughest position in the league to play. So, you know, it's not guaranteed to hit. And then you go back through some of these top guys that are in the ADP right now. So Christian McCaffrey, number one. Saquon Barkley, number three. Those are top picks of pretty much any – how you, you want to chop it up in rookie drafts. Uh, Zeke, a top pick in a rookie draft. Um, Dalvin Cook, a top pick in a rookie draft. Uh, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, top picks in rookie drafts. Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, top picks from last year in a rookie draft. So I'm just saying, you know, I understand the value of the quarterback, but there definitely can be an argument made for that you don't have to go that way. Like there, there is other ways. There, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. And I, again, I understand the value of the quarterback. But like I said, a lot of those top guys didn't come from being drafted at the top. And a lot of these top running backs that are on this list did. So I like it. That's that's some some good information that you dug up for us to kind of put it in perspective. Um, let me put my twist on the perspective before we go, go through the actual draft here because, I, you know, the super flex, like you said, is meant to bring the quarterbacks into, back into relevancy because in one quarterback league, 12-man roster, who cares, right? Right. Um, I mean, obviously, you got your Lamar Jacksons of last year and your Carson Wentz's of two years, three years ago, and Mahomes two years ago. I mean, it happens, and a, and a quarterback gets on a heater and – you know, historically, they don't repeat it the next season. Um, the heaters come from the TD rate most mostly, and uh, that ridiculous. Regression. Good. It, it, it does. It, historically, it shows you that it comes back a little bit. True. Um, now, obviously, Lamar Jackson has all – they could come down a lot and still be crushing because he outscored everybody by a ton. But, you know, and Patrick Mahomes missed some games, but those are some – you know, that's lightning in a bottle with those top two guys. Anyway, it's the super flex part. Because you don't have to – it's not a two – we're talking super flex. We're not talking about two quarterback league. Good point. So you don't have to have that second quarterback. But what what happens if you don't have that second quarterback? If, let's just assume that you have, you know, two running back – everybody has crazy roster lineups these days. Well, let's just say you have a quarterback spot, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and a flex or two, and then the super flex. The cool lineups that I like that we have in a lot of our leagues, we have two and, and we have two flexes and then a super flex, which really, which really makes it deep. But if you have only two flexes and one of those flexes are a super flex, that's fine. But so the point is, if you pull it, we, I pulled up one of our leagues where the quarterback scoring is five points per touchdown. So that's that middle. Some middle play, life, yeah. Some people play four touchdowns. Some people play six points per touchdown. Some people play five. But if you pull up uh, last year's stats, point per game. Uh, the top 32 players, only 11 of them are position players not named quarterback. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give you 21 players out of the top 32 that are quarterbacks. So like even last year, an awful season, a season that felt terrible, Andy Dalton, Tom Brady, Kirk Cousins, 18-something points a game. Like you know how good your player has to be to score 18 points a game in a flex right. spot because you you've already gone through two running backs and two wide receivers and a tight end. So it is so incredibly difficult to find somebody. I mean, you might you, you some teams have like Odell and Mike Evans and Michael Thomas. Some teams have that third monster receiver or that third monster running back. It, it can mm -hmm. happen. Um, you know, but it's 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 so hard and through bye weeks and injuries and everything else, it's so hard not to really need to use that quarterback in the super flex spot. So that's where the value comes from. And that drives this huge divide in like you we were already touched on it a little bit. If you got a startup dynasty for super flex, it's different. The 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 players are out of are out of order versus a rookie dyna, dynasty like super flex draft. You will see Tua and you will see uh, Joe Burrow going in the top of those picks in a lot of drafts. Not most of them. People can take Clyde. People can take Jonathan Taylor. If you look at the the rookie draft mocks that are out there, um, 
no, the startup mocks. A lot of times, Dobbins is already off the board before Burrow even goes, and then two is a whole round later. So, in a when when you're starting up, Joe Burrow is usually being taken where the fourth or the fifth rookie is actually going off the board, where you got a couple of running backs going in front of him in a startup super flex draft because all the other quarterbacks are mixed in. But then you take it to the rookie draft of this year and you have an existing league. You're in a rookie draft. It's like, okay, well, how, what makes people take Joe Burrow over Jonathan Taylor or Clyde Edwards Hilaire when and if the startup, it would be maybe a round or two's difference. Easy. Well, what makes people do that could be if you started last year and you have and you took Andrew Luck, right? Or if you started last year and you took Andrew Luck and Cam Newton. Cam Newton's not even on a team and Andrew Luck retired. So all of a sudden, you got a team that doesn't even have one quarterback. Or you took Mr. Trubisky and he, Nick Foles took his job. Like all, you can be in a position to where you are just half hap- You got no hope at a quarterback position. So you have to you have to drive up to a, and and burrow. But if you you know if you play your cards right, if you come out of a tra- if you come out of a startup draft with a couple of quarterbacks, which that should be just like Jay Wayne said, if you're trying to make a trade after the draft after the league is in existence, you have to try to find somebody with three or four quarterbacks, and even they won't they still treat them like gold because that's the point. So it's it's hard, and that's why that's how you can find yourself in a position where even if you came in a, out of a super flex rookie or startup draft recently, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna be good at quarterback. All of a sudden, you need Burrow at one one so bad because you somebody retired and somebody got hurt. And, you know, you had turnover at position, so it's 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 weird and wild how the rookie draft ADP and the startup draft ADP and superflex can be not even not even close. All right. Well, we were experiencing a little bit of technical technical difficulty there, but I think we got it worked out. So we're going to keep this thing rolling. Uh, I got I got a couple of different things I want to tie what you guys said to, together. Um, Big Co, you were just there talking about you know looking at the discrepancy in in when quarterbacks go in a startup versus uh, ADP for for a, a mock or a, excuse me, a rookie draft. Like, for instance, um, you know, Burroughs at, at ADP, I think, 36, where Clyde and Jonathan Taylor are at 21 and 23 in a startup mm-hmm. ADP on DLF. And then and Dobbins is even at 31. Right. And then – and but in, on the rookie uh, super flex ADP, Burroughs number one. And, you know, we kind of talked about it off air. I kind of understand that a little bit to the point where if you're in a startup, you know you can take that running back and there's still a whole – league of quarterbacks that you're going to be able to draft from when you're already in it and you're in that rookie draft there's no more quarterbacks I mean there's a couple more we're going to talk about but you know I get try I get I get why you might be forced to take Burrow there at the one one and and Casey you mentioned you know there's there's more than one way to skin a cat I'm never going to try to skin a cat anyway so um I, I don't know how that would go but I mean I, I really enjoyed all that, all that information you gave us and kind of, it's pretty eye opening to, to hear about, you know, all the quarterbacks that were quote unquote, the first guys that should go in your draft, not pan out. And then these later round guys are, are the ones that are towards the top now. Um, but, but with all that being said, like, I'm still going to probably take Joe Burrow one, one, I don't know, eight or nine times out of 10, probably. I mean, I just, I just think he's just so good, in my opinion. Like, he's just a really good player. And uh, I'm going to roll some tape for you here because we're probably not going to talk about rookies for for too much longer, and I won't get a chance to do this. So I'll kind of talk you through it. I mean, this dude just shredded the whole entire college season. He had 5,671 yards and 60 touchdowns. It's crazy. Like, this dude is just – he's just so good. He checks all the boxes, in my opinion. He's got pinpoint accuracy. He drops dimes downfield – deep he thro- he's throwing guys open he can thread the needle uh he's got he's got a beautiful touch on the ball he's a, he's a smart guy he makes multiple reads he moves well and buys time inside and outside of the pocket he can get rid of the ball quickly he throws strikes on the run like and then you know i know this is a, a thing that you bring up a lot casey is is he has underrated athleticism like this man is really good at rushing the ball um, he can scramble yeah. for first downs. He had a he had a rushing touchdown on a design run in the red zone versus Clemson in the national championship. Um, he had 12 total rushing touchdowns over the last two years, five and seven respectively. He had more rushing yards in each of the last two yard two years 
than Tua had his whole career combined. Right. Um, so I, I was really surprised at that aspect, watching some tape, trying to find some good clips to show you guys of how good it, this guy was at running the ball. And so I just think that he's just so safe, and there's, and there's a high ceiling as well. And, and we haven't even talked at all about the Cincinnati Bengals offense and what that could be with Zach Taylor and, and what they're trying to put together and all the offensive line pieces that are coming together for them. And, and if they can get Joe Mixon in camp and they got the, the young rookie wide receiver they drafted with T. Higgins and they got A.J. Green coming back and Tyler Boyd. So, I mean, it's a good-looking offense, I think, and, and much better than what people would give him credit for just looking at what they did last year. I can't be mad if you want to take t- t- uh, Jonathan Taylor or Clyde, but man, I, I just would have to take two uh, or uh, I would have to take um, Joe Burrow, Burrow because. Yeah. I and I can't have to do it. I can't necessarily argue with you, but for all the things that, that you just said, I, I do think Burrow is good. And that, you know, I do think two is pretty good. Um, so I'm, I'm not really upset. And again, I do know how valuable these quarterbacks can be, but it's just, again, how many times these quarterbacks don't work out that are drafted high in the draft. Now I do, again, I think Burrow is a little bit different circumstance. I do think he is pretty good. You can go back to the argument of, you know, if you put Herbert and Burrow or tour scenario, they would probably, he would probably be, have much better statistics than he has as well, because the scenarios that they were in were both really good scenarios. Like there's number one draft picks all around those dudes on both sides of the ball. Um, so both in scenarios to thrive. But that being said, I, again, I do think Joe Burrow is a really good player. Um, if I don't have uh, a second quarterback, uh, sh- sure, I'm taking Joe Burrow. And maybe even if I don't have a third, I'm taking Joe Burrow. But I I, I really do like Jonathan Taylor. I wouldn't take Clyde Edwards as, as the number one guy. I would replace him with Jonathan Taylor just because, you know, we have videos talking about why uh, Taylor over Clyde. Um, but I just think he's a cornerstone player that could be up there with all those number one picks that I talked about, the Dalvins, the CMCs, the Chubbs, and the Mixons of the world uh, as moving forward. So I don't, I don't, I just wanted to argue against saying this is what you had to do and give you a lot of reasons why. I'm not necessarily saying you should go one way or the other, but I'm just saying that it doesn't have to be that way. And I could be okay with taking Jonathan Taylor. Uh, I don't think you're messing it up necessarily. Um, if you don't have a quarterback, you're messing it up, not taking Burrow or Tua. Um, anyway, you guys want to keep moving along here? Yeah, let's let's uh, roll through this draft. So, you know, you mentioned right, Clyde. So, we, already, we, ha- we have the first yeah. seven that are rattled off. You can see that there on the screen. Um, big well, hold, hold, before, you, before you jump ahead of there. Like, no, I'm not going to jump ahead of that. Okay. Like, I think we should talk about Tua and where we want to take yeah, him. I agree. So, it's Clyde, it's Burrow, it's, it's Taylor. Again, I'd be okay with however you want to chop that up. If, if you don't have a quarterback, if you wanted to take Tua ahead of Taylor, if you wanted to take Tua ahead of Clyde, I'm probably always taking Burrow ahead of Tua. Um, there is a lot of stuff to like about Tua's game. And when you talk, when you listen to other people talk about Tua who have been around the game a while and, and evaluate quarterbacks and do all these other things, Tua just has the it factor, just this intangible thing that, it, it, you know, he's a game palpable. Um, but I would always have – I think Burrow's a better prospect than Tua. Some people would disagree. And then to, to add the health on top of what Tua has going on, he like the, the hip injury is a concern uh, long-term for a quarterback. It's not to say that I would drop him past, you know, where three or four here. But I mean, I could I, see taking maybe Dobbins over Tua, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm I definitely okay. have sure. Tua in a different tier of quarterback than than – Joe Burrow. I mean, I do think Tua is really good. Um, he's he's a, he's an exciting player. He's got that lefty appeal, which there's not too many successful lefty QBs in, or, in the league. I was but say, whatever. Or it's not appeal, right? Well, I mean, whatever. This dude's, you know, like you said, he's got the it factor. He's a gamer. He's a quick striker. He he, you know, things he's can be going accurate. bad for him, and then all of a sudden, boom, he hits you with a quick deep strike. You know, he threw a pretty bad interception versus Clemson in the national championship a couple of years ago, and he comes right back on the next series and hits Judy with a beautiful deep ball for for a quick strike to get them right back in the game. Um, and and a big part of his game is throwing that accurate that accurate ball, both in the short, intermediate, and deep, deep areas of the field. Um, he, came, he came through in the clutch for them a ton, and when they needed him, he made a play. He, he, he can put good touch on the ball. You know, he's not just a fastball guy. He's, he's got yeah. a good, lofty touch to, to his thing. He can drop dimes in the bucket, even if, you know, Judy's dropping it sometimes. He's still dropping dimes in there. Um, 
and and he did play with a slew of good players too, just like Burrow. That could definitely be a knock on these guys, whether or not they were products of their environment. I, I do think he probably raised the level of play of people around him, just like I, I think the, that's the case with Burrow. Um, I, and I think Sue has got pretty decent pocket awareness, but there's definitely some downside because I do think he holds on to the ball too long at times, and he takes well, some big and hits. People knock right? Burrow for that too, for holding on too long, not hitting the first open guy, holding it too long, and ha- ha- relying on that athleticism to hit the wide open second guy. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's on both of those guys. But, but two is taking those hits, man. Two is taking yeah. some pretty gross hits, and I have a couple to, to play for you here uh, that I just rolled. But like, you know, there's some pretty concerning injuries. You know, you mentioned that hit, but he had he's had a sprained knee. He's had high ankle sprains in both of his ankles, um, which both instances he had what was called a tightrope procedure, which is where a surgeon slips a high-strength structure through small holes in the bone. I'm going to show you a picture here. And then they fasten it with small metal buttons and then tighten it up as you would a zip tie. Um, and it's like this new cutting-edge uh, new age surgery that's pretty pretty new, and it, it may it turns what would be a eight week plus recovery time into a four week recovery, um, and he's he's had that on both of his ankles, so that's that's a little concerning. Although he did make a good recovery, and then like you said, that career threatening dislocated right hip uh, with posterior uh, acetabular wall fracture. I don't know, it just sounds bad. Uh, I probably mispronounced that. Some doctors out there just cringing, but. Uh, that that's I think because of those concerns, that's why I would be fine taking Clyde or Taylor and then Clyde and pro- probably even Dobbins over him. You know, even if I did need if I needed a second quarterback, then maybe I'd have to just pull the trigger. I, uh, yeah, I think you got to um, take either one of the quarterbacks. But if I just needed a third guy, I probably would take the running backs. You know. Yeah. What about you, Big Co? Yeah, I agree. Let me go two more seconds here. I lost my wind in our technical difficulties, and let me let me just double stamp the stamp of why you can't triple stamp a double stamp of why the quarterback in the superflex and the actual superflex spot is so valuable. Last year, the Sam Darnold had mono, missed a couple games, came back with in a points per game. He it, one of his games he had negative point seven. That was the I'm seeing ghost out there Monday night game. Mm-hmm. He outscored Zach Ertz in points per game, just barely, but he outscored Zach Ertz in tight end premium, outscored Leonard Fournette, um, Cooper Cup, um, Mark Ingram, Keenan Allen, Nick Chubb. You know, Is this Mark, Sam Darnold with having missed all those games? It made points per game, but I'm okay. saying he he had mono and came back and and and, and including which we negative. said like just because you got rid of mono and now like you're it's not in you anymore doesn't mean you're exactly. like back to a hundred percent like that but shit I'm, lingers. Take take away Zach Ertz and Leonard Fournette, all those guys I just said, Jacoby Brissett and Eli Manning outscored them points per game, right? Basically, if you have a quarterback that's going to start, Kyle Allen and Eli Manning and Jacoby Brissett outscored Darren Waller in tight end premium, Mark Ingram in tight end premium, Keenan Allen, Nick Chubb, Julian Edelman, uh, Chris Carson, Allen Robinson, Tyreek Hill, and Kenny Galladay. So, like, all those game. players, all those players are going to be in your regular lineup spots they're none of those players are going to make it to your flex most likely if you if you're strong at one position you'll have one of those good guys in your flex it's that's basically like you get to a point like joe burrow you're talking about the safety jay wayne he's a number one pick in the draft the Bengals are not an aggressive franchise it's not going to be like a josh rosen we picked josh rosen in his class was the most pro ready like like casey said he's the most pro ready and then all of a sudden the team took a different quarterback the next year and put him behind the eight ball. And and then he goes to Miami and they take another quarterback. It's just you know, but if you can get a quarterback like Joe Burrow, who's gonna be a starter, he's gonna play for a couple and they Andy Dalton's gone, so like there is no competition for the starting job anymore. He, he's it's hard to not take even Joe Jonathan Taylor, he, even though I agree with Casey, he's a he's probably going to be and that elite asset running back, if Joe Burrow becomes that elite asset quarterback, he's probably, I mean, Joe, Jonathan Taylor would have to be Saquon Barkley or Christian McCaffrey to be more valuable than Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, yeah. Joe Burrow could struggle 
for two years as a quarterback, be the worst quarterback in the league, and still put up 18, 17, 18 points in your super flex spot. Yeah, that's fair. If, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Jonathan Taylor could be blowing up, and he could be scoring you 25 a game, and nobody you couldn't even trade for him. That's a, that's a possibility. But it's also a possibility that he's scoring 12 points a game. And if 15, he's struggling, you know, or, you know if, he, if he's struggling getting you 12, and Joe Burrow is struggling getting you 18. Um, so, and, and, you know, so, and, and then if Joe Burrow hits, he, you might, he might hit for 10, 12 years. We talk, we, we talk about it all the time. Don't give me that 10 year stuff. We're playing for a couple of years. Don't who's even on your team in 10 years. Don't give me that. But if the quarterback does hit, you might have him for a decade. If the running back hits, you might have him for four or five years. Yeah. And I, I'm not disagreeing which, which with I got you no guys, problem with that. But, I'll take, I'll take a running back that hits for four or five years over right, a quarterback that right. hits. I'll take because the there's not, there's hits. not that many of those. And there's a lot exactly. of quarterbacks. Um, exactly. And, and again, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I wanted to make all those points to kind of push back and say that you don't have to do that. But again, even if if Joe Burrow sucks and he's scored, yeah, he I the importance of starting the second quarterback, that's why I was saying if you don't have a two, then you gotta right. take the quarterback. If you have a three, I could see it. But even he's, then you kind of want the third. But like I said, sure. like it's all, all like there's one first round uh, super flex quarterback that's even in the top 10 right now and all the rest mm-hmm. of them are receivers and running backs so value wise regardless of what it is in your starting lineup value wise for everybody else in the league um, yep. the running back could easily be at the top of that list for, for a little while and Joe Burrow could be in the you know 60s and, 70s 80s and as we move through these next couple of players this will this will be something easy to talk about there but even uh, most of those players you talked about for, that are at the top their path was very unclear you know it was hard to imagine it was hard, it was really hard to to see the future in the chiefs trading away alex smith because they were going to the playoffs and actually were really almost dominant on offense not even near the level of dominance that they are now my home to right. but look, like you said, Flynn had just been paid big money by the Seahawks. Nobody ever thought Russell Wilson was going to start that season, you know. And like Dak, he was – I mean, it, R- Romo had to get his, some weird tackle, and then all of a sudden he's retired in preseason, and then Dak came in and never even thought about turning it back over to right. anybody else. He was great from the word go. Not great as a quarterback, but great as a leader, great as a poised. I'm not turning it over. My team's not losing because of me. He didn't go out and win games early, but he didn't lose them. Those he's pack, a leader. Pack, the path for those quarterbacks were not was was not, was not traditional and it wasn't easy. It wasn't laid it out wasn't for them. Like not clear is not even right. strong enough of a way to put it. It's like it was almost like those it couldn't have it happened. And so as we get on into this draft, get paid, you can easily see how two is on the field. Obviously, Burrow is going to play. Um, you and know. hopefully Tua isn't on the field for a year. Like if I have him, like I don't want him out there risking it. Like let this man yeah. sit for a Completely second. Let this old line it figure sit. it out. Like, and let it sit. And to, you know, go but off. That's like, probably this not going to happen. He's probably going to get forced into there if I had to guess. But. This isn't your normal off season, And we have a video talking about that and that, what you know, what kind of what to do. And, and Burrow may be a, a buy low by the three quarters of the way through the season because he is struggling because this was a weird off season. It's not Good normal. Call. Like all the, the, a lot of the teams that we're buying into and buying players of and doing that are the teams with a lot of continuity and, you know, I've, Colin Cowher was talking about it today on his show. He was listening to all the teams with continuity, and it's a it's a it's a bunch of good teams. It's the Bills, it's the Niners, it's you know it's this team is that those teams are going to come out and probably be pretty strong off the rip because the con- meaning Saints, Chiefs, Cowboys. meaning they're putting out this the, the Chiefs, the, yeah, they're putting out the same group of guys that they had. There's not that's a lot of turnover, so they're familiar. Joe Burrow is coming into a situation that's going to be hard for him to really thrive off the rip. I think you're going to see flashes, but it might be really Joe Burrow could be a buy by three quarters of the way through the season. Yeah, for the people watching this video that didn't see the video Casey's talking about, it's good good call to bring that up. Yeah. All right. So. Again, we're not going to touch on like kind of where these guys go. J.K. Dobbins goes after Tua Tagovailoa. We got we got Dobbins as our third guy. We got Cam Akers as our fourth guy. We got Swift as our fifth guy. Um, so now it gets interesting. Would you guys take Herbert here? Would you take where this guy's taking Henry Ruggs? Which I don't think you should take Henry bad, Ruggs here. Bad pick. I think that's a bad pick. Um, just not to say that you shouldn't take Henry Ruggs, but it's just just way too early for Henry Ruggs way there, in my early. opinion. Just trade back. Um, you take, yeah, I like take the Herbert idea of here. Rugs just trade back, right? You can't. I'm not take. You can't take Rugs over Lamb. Is is anybody taking Herbert here? I don't think for I can the, do it. For all the things that we I, that I just talked about, I completely see that playing too. Playing out. Um, 
it's hard to take it's hard to take Herbert over Lamb, but there's a there's wide receivers the most plentiful position you can you can make do and not start to wrap, drafting wide receivers to the tenth round in any type of draft you have. Mm-hmm. Um, you can still figure it out if you had to. Um, I can see taking jo- Justin Herbert here. I I I'd love to chase the fun in Lamb, but if you need a quarterback, it's not even close. You got to take Herbert. If you only have one starting quarterback then I guess you should probably take Herbert and wait it out and see what happens. I don't feel great about it. Like, I took him – so so Henry Ruggs fell off at 1-8, and then CeeDee Lamb goes at 1-9. And then I, I had this pick at 110, and I, I was going back and forth. I wasn't really sure. I hadn't I hadn't dived a ton into Herbert at that point. Um, I did go through and watch uh, some, some film for this video just to make sure I knew what I was thinking. And, like, looking back, I don't think I would have taken Herbert there. I think I probably should have taken – uh, Rager or Justin Jefferson instead. Um, and then I think I probably would even take Jerry Judy over Herbert as well. So that, that pushes Herbert there towards the end of the f- first round. Or I guess if we take Ruggs out of 1-8 and shove everybody up forward, then Herbert would be there at the 112. Um, and and if, I, if I have two good quarterbacks, I can even see you taking Denzel Mims or T. Higgins and just missing out on Herbert altogether. Um, he's, this guy was a tough evaluation. Like I went, I went back and forth watching him. Like at one point I liked him, one point I didn't like he's, he's, he is going to get his opportunity to start quarter at quarterback in the NFL. So that's, that's a pretty strong point to, of why you might should take him. Um, he, you know, I let me I jump think, in and I'll jump right back out. All right. If startup versus rookie draft, uh, the next 12 rookies are gone before Jer- Justin Herbert gets drafted. So I could see yeah. everything oh. you just said. I, everything you just said, I completely agree. It's not even close. Yeah, I said if you need a if you need a quarterback, it's not even close. And it's just it, just looking at those assets, those wide receiver assets. It's all those guys are gone before Herbert's even looked at in a startup. So I completely right. agree. If you somewhere in the middle of this rookie draft, you have to say, what am I doing? You know, am I chasing something like the the Chargers are a good team, and Tyrod could legitimately play three quarters of the season. You might not even get to see Herbert this year. Um, and what I don't does that think mean? You should. Who knows? You know, and, but ju- if Justin Jefferson's out there burning it up, if Den- Denzel Mims is a target hog, if Rager's a target hog, like you, you're going to be like, man, those guys are fun, and my guys on the bench. You know, I can see what you're saying there, Jay. Yeah, but I mean, watching him play, like there is a lot to like. There's a decent amount not to like, but I mean, he can make any throw. He can make it inside the pocket or or on the run. It doesn't matter. He has what they call an NFL arm. Uh, a live arm. It's a, a cannon. Arm. Yeah. Cannon. I miss not having the soundboard. I'd have the little uh, cannon. Uh, shout out to uh, who? who's that? DJ Drama? Dan, yeah. Um, um, uh, Dan Patrick says if, you gotta, if you're good at anything, if you're a good quarterback, they never say you have a strong arm. <laughs> you know, it, mm. it's like well, they, you never hear him say how strong Russell Wilson's arm is because right. he can, he's a good he quarterback. he can do so much else. But, yeah, but if he he's can... not a good quarterback, you're like, oh, he's got a good arm. That thing's live. Strong well, I don't arm. like that as an argument. Got a can. Uh, well, that's like what they, that. they also said that about Patty Mahomes, too. So. Yeah. But he did say Patrick Mahomes. He was like, but he does everything else. It's fair. It's fair. I mean, but <laughs> Herbert's got, got the ideal size, and he's what GMs are looking for. He's got, he's got some he's athleticism. Got a ton of, he's got – Ton of athleticism. You want flip on that Rose Bowl tape, and he's he's he scored three rushing touchdowns, I think. And he gets outside of that pocket, he makes dudes miss out there. Well, like, that's an under, very underrated part of his game. I do think he had maybe like fifty total rushing yards that whole year, and like forty-two of them came in the Rose Bowl. And all three of his rushing, t- all all the rushing touchdowns came in that one game. So that might have been a bit of an aberration, but he did look good in that game. I'll give you that. Um, and he didn't. He didn't really have a ton of weapons. He's got Pittman's brother over there who missed a lot of time this year. Um, their running backs were all kind of injured. He does have a really good offensive line. They have a left tackle or a guard who's going to be a top draft pick uh, coming out. Uh, Sewell or Sewell or I'm not sure what his name is. There's a good offensive line there, and the defense for Oregon super underrated. Uh, a lot of good players coming out of there. I bet a lot on Oregon unders for a while, and then I I've, I've <laughs> did a lot of Pac-12 after dark, so I've watched a ton of Herbert. Uh, he's my favorite quarterback. I'm rooting the most for Herbert. I'm not saying I like him the most. I'm saying I'm rooting for him the most. There's he had, Like you said, he has everything in, in the arsenal there. Now, Mario Cristobal's offense, it's not exactly – he wasn't asked to do the things that these other guys were asked to do, and he didn't have the pieces around him to do it. It was more just don't make mistakes. We're going to play defense. We're going to run the ball. We're going to get the throws that are open. Now, he didn't 
the, the problem with Herbert is, is he is, he was a little gun shy on slinging the ball into these tight windows. So like he'd hold the ball for too long and not, and not just put it in there when he has the arm to do so. So I think like a, he could have been coached into playing that way though. And, and it could have been just schematically a little different dude, super smart. Everyone thinks he's kind of like an introvert, but he, they said he's like a super ridiculous leader. Like he's the opposite of that. Um, seems like a really good kid. I'm really rooting for him. I would send, I would say quarterback is the position I spend the least amount of time watching tape on because all the top guys, at least I end up watching them throughout their career for the most part. Like Burrow is always on two is always on. I, like I said, I love watching PAC 12 after dark stuff because it's the only thing on late night and I love betting those games. So I watched a lot of Herbert. Um, and I do think there's a lot of good and a lot of bad. Would I take Go ahead. Definitely like some bad. I mean, I did. There was a knock that I heard that he all he throws is fastballs, but I mean, there's plenty of examples of him putting nice touch on the ball um, and, and and throwing nice balls. But like, there's just a ton of inconsistency. You know, there's a there's a lot of bad throws. Um, I'm not sure how good he is at diagnosing defenses. And like you said, it might be a product of that Oregon offense. Uh, I heard Brett Coleman say that almost a, f- a fourth of his entire attempts or screen passes, you know, that doesn't, that's, that's like, what that's the offense is Astronomical record that like no one's ever come close to, to that's what that offense is though. And I, and I think he has a lot to learn before he can be successful in the NFL. He's never taken a snap under center. Um, he gets, he gets knocked for like double clutching and hitching when he should just trust his instincts and let it fly before the guy's actually open. And then he's into, he ends up being late or, or is, he gets his receivers lit up cause he's late on throws. And, and so I do think that, that, you know, the the Chargers coach wants to keep his job. He's probably going to play with Tyrod. Tyrod gives him a chance to win. He's not going to blow it. And you might not see Herbert for maybe the whole year. And, and I think that's probably good, I think, for, for, for Herbert. And and you want him to sit back and learn. But, you know, I don't know what that does for your fantasy well, the problem, stock. The problem you know? will be is if there's, any, if there's any struggle from Tyrod and if it looks sluggish, there's going to be a lot of pressure to play the guy you just drafted that when wherever the hell Herbert got seven, drafted one six one seven yeah um so you it, who knows where where when you're gonna see Herbert and how much Herbert you're gonna see I would say for the most part I'd probably take C.D. Lamb over him for the most part I would agree with you where I would take Justin Jefferson Rager and Judy and then I would take Herbert but like you said Big Co you know so at some point you got to say hey what am I doing I'm gonna just take this quarterback if I don't have a second one I'm probably taking Herbert ahead of all those guys Honestly, if I don't have if I don't have a third one. I'm, I might even consider taking him in front of those guys. It all depends on what your build of your team kind of looks saying, like. I was saying, what am I doing? Like, base. I mean, how, how am I passing up on some of these wide receivers uh, on okay. this quarterback? Yeah. This, this getting drafted 17 rounds later, not 17, but 10 rounds later in a, in yeah. a super flex startup. Startup. Um, He's a high round draft pick. Sorry, there so, is a monster spider crawling across the floor. Right <laughs> Got to keep your ago, eyes Jay on that Wayne thing. Had the bugs. Yeah, I had the cockroach Gosh. on the pleasure chest one time. <laughs> Dude, I have got to get. I have to got to squash this thing here in a second. We, we can handle it for a second. You got it. Um, so I think I would take all those guys if if Herbert was hanging around one eleven, one twelve. I could probably scoop him up if I don't have a second quarterback or even third. I I could discuss again. He's a top top round draft pick but i just did all that stuff of saying you know it might not even be worth it because it's it's hit or miss but i think for the most part i would lay off herber and probably take him at the 112 but i could see how if you, if you need the if you have the need but again the thing with herbert is is you could take him at the 1819 wherever cd lamb was and now you ha- at least have an option of making a trade right to get another quarterback the, you took the words right out of my mouth which you always say this is like you in order to get a quarterback in a trade you almost have, you have to give up a quarterback so you'd be a good wise, yeah. right right that's what we're talking about here we're doing right, superflex right. for all the the non, uh, what do they call it? So, what was it? Swine, something swine. Uh, what, I don't what, know. What kind of stupid swine? I don't know. It was a synonym for stupid, but anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right. So we we essentially are have come to grips with there. So, like I said, there's another draft. It tells you how, where we like these guys and what order and how we would take them. So we're not going to spend a ton of time on that. Rager at two one is a steal. Um, yeah, I would take he Higgins over Mims. Um, Pittman's in the right spot. Keyshawn Vaughn finally in the right spot. 
Um, I would probably even take AJ Dillon over Keyshawn Vaughn. I know that's yeah, very boy, for sure. Let's to say, get it. I feel it. better and better about AJ Dillon every draft we go through because I just feel myself like wanting him more every time we go through a draft, whether it's a rookie draft or a startup draft. I'm just like, how can we get AJ Dillon? The more and more I think <laughs> about it, the more I argue for him, the more it just makes total sense to get AJ Dillon, baby. So the next burning question on the board is where does Jordan Love fall here? So here he's at two. Got him? Mm -hmm. All right. Tried to hide from me. They're crafty creatures. Um, So Jordan Love at 2-8 here. Keyshawn Vaughn, A.J. Dillon, Zach Moss. I'm going to take Jordan Love after those guys. I'm going to take him after Brian Edwards. I'm going to take him after Ayuk. I'm going to take him after Antonio Gibson. And you come down here and you see Chenault at 3-1. I'm going to take uh, Chanel over Jordan Love as well. So that that pr- basically for me puts Jordan Love at 212-ish range. Um, okay. So that probably means that I'm going to miss Jordan Love. You are. I'm not, I'm not upset about him? that. What if you have yeah. uh, Aaron Rodgers? Are you going to reach and take him before uh, some of those – Wide receivers and running backs you just mentioned, the, like the Antonio. I don't Gibson think so because I, I, I think I have I think I have three or four more years to figure that out. Like regardless well, of whether he you will Jordan Love becomes that. the Packer or not, you will become the it. Packer just, starter or not. Sorry, you will have that. It's just yeah. whether or not Aaron Rodgers is on the Packers. So if you and I have no problem taking all those guys you just said over Jordan Love because it seems and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the path. That those other guys, you, when Dak was drafted, he was a third round draft pick. Obviously, Jordan Love traded up in the first round, completely different. But, you know, they traded up to get Patrick Mahomes, and Alex Smith was out there taking him to the playoffs. It was Alex Smith, but they were still between with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey that you couldn't stop them. As Andy Reid drawing up X and O's, nobody could stop the offense. And everybody knew the pass was only going to go 15 yards downfield. Every once in a while, he'd throw it over the top to Tyreek. The point is, right this second, it looks like Jordan Love is buried. But somehow, some way, if would it surprise anybody that this time next year, Aaron Rodgers is not a Packer and Jordan Love's a starting quarterback? I mean, not necessarily. I, I'm not sure. I'm buying into Jordan Love uh, that's fine. as a that's as fine. a player. But, but I get, yeah, that's yeah. I agree. I agree. But I'm I'm, I'm going to go ahead and and pass on him and all those guys. And and there's a video of telling you why we like AJ Dillon. There's a video of telling you why we think Keyshawn Vaughn's overrated. Just in case anybody was mad about that last statement that I made. You can go check all that stuff out. Yeah, we got um, you can go. So, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm pulling up Aaron Jordan Rodgers' loves- contract here. They, they have a potential out in 2022 where there'd be 17 million dead cap, which is still a big number. If they were to get rid of him next year, there'd be 36 million dead cap. So pretty sure well, somebody, Aaron Rodgers is going to be. Somebody would trade for Aaron Rodgers. Is- okay, fair enough. Like, if, if, Fair enough. you could pretty much any team in the league right now, outside of one or two, Patrick Mahomes and maybe Lamar Jackson. I think everybody else would be like, "Yeah, we'll trade you for Aaron Rodgers right now." That's a fair. lot of teams would. So, you, so it would be cap. It just wouldn't be that dead. You'd be right. you'd have gotten something back for what you paid for. Jordan True. Love. There's a there's some good and there's some bad. It's a, it changed it's coordinators a tale of this two year. Tales. He changed coordinators this year. He he didn't look good. He looked good much better the year before. Um, I'm not necessarily buying in. Like I said, I, I would take all those other guys in front of him. Yeah, I, I had to do some digging into Jordan Love for this video and to see what I what I thought about him because of just with the Packers taking him in the first round when they they could have given Aaron Rodgers some weapons and I mean they were a game away from uh, you know going to the Super Bowl right? Were they in the NFC Championship with the not, not past the first quarter? But yeah, you're you're on the right track. Um, and then they go and take Jordan Love and it's like damn. What's what's with this guy, right? And it, it's a tale of two tales. Like 2018, he had a ridiculous year, 32 touch. It was okay. it was a good year, right? 32 touchdowns, six interceptions. Then you take it to 19, and it was 20 touchdowns and 17 interceptions. Yeah. Um. And and like yeah, you would think those would flip flop. You think that would happen a, a year before? Right. Right. You watch a few of the games from 19. Well, it's, just a, it's a change stylistically in how they were playing, and the coordinator is is what happened. That's that's fair, but still, I mean, there's there's just a bunch of bad, ill-advised throws, and there's like multiple t- interceptions in those 19 games that you can find in pretty much every game, and like a bunch of tip balls, and and like his wide receivers didn't do him any favors either. There was a lot of drops that, from what I could see. I mean, and there was some really good throws each game where you could tell like that he has an NFL arm. 
Um, and, but then if, if you go back to 18 and watch him versus uh, Michigan State, he looked like a world beater. Like he was just keeping him in there, just accurate, showing his big arm, uh, yeah. showing some touch, like throwing on the run, scrambling, like nothing flashy, but similar to Aaron Rodgers where he can scramble and get you a first down. Um, you know, and the, and the Packers have – have a history of having good QBs. They didn't draft Brett Favre, but they did trade their first round pick for him after Favre's first year in the league. And then they took Aaron Rodgers late when they didn't need to. And, you know, I could see taking him if you have Aaron Rodgers and, I certainly wouldn't be. I'm okay it. with it, with what they did, I guess, without taking the skill position they probably should have, and and letting this guy sit for a while and figure it out. I mean, but I'm not taking him in the super flex. Um, yeah. All right. So what? So Jalen Hurts, you can see down here at four one. That's never happening. Um, yeah, all these if, quarterbacks are probably going in the third round. If I have if I have Carson Wentz is the only reason I'm pretty much taking Jalen Hurts. There's there uh, some of these other guys like there's a couple other guys in the third round here that I would rather take over Jalen Hurts. But for the most part, after all those guys are gone, I'm, I'll take Jalen Hurts. If I have Carson Wentz, I would take him at the three one area. I'm not a huge fan of Jalen Hurts. I think that was a stupid pick by the Eagles. I understand what they're doing because Carson Wentz hasn't been the picture of health. I don't. I don't see Jalen Hurts as a starting quarterback week in, week out for an NFL team, but I see him as a good backup player. Um, I see him as a good reserve for for Carson Wentz that can give them a shot to keep them in games. His legs can do things. I just the, Yeah, the opposing defenses are going to have to think about what right. they're going to change up and how they're going to use him on the ground. And so Maybe there's could, some Taysom Hill action. Maybe he could run the ball a little bit and – I could get down with Jalen Hurts at the three one three two area. There's, you know, maybe I would rather have a couple of like a Van Jefferson or a DeVernay or a Hamler over him. But for the most part, like I could, with super flex, so I could see the value again. If you if you have a quarterback, you might be able to trade for another quarterback because you're giving somebody else a quarterback. So there's value in just having a body on your team. That's that the that the the team that drafted him likes and and Hurts was the high pick there. So I could see picking him up even if you don't have Wentz at the three one three two area so that you could possibly move him in a package to get another quarterback for your team because you're giving a quarterback. It's really hard to get a quarterback without giving a quarterback like we've mentioned multiple times in here. Right. I, I, I think I'm a little higher on him for this future. We've all, uh, we've had that before, discussion before on another um, video, so I don't, we don't have to spend too much time on it. Um, it's, but still in the same type range, though, so in the three, one range, um, maybe, you know, two twelve based on who's going on or whatever, but I, I want to take my home run cut on Antonio Gibson and, 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 and uh, obviously Edwards and I and stuff like that first. Um, but it, once those guys are gone, I'm happy to take Jalen hurts in a super flex. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I can do it unless like you said, Casey, I have Carson Wentz. Like I don't. I just don't see – it seems like a wasted pick. I don't know what you're planning on getting out of that pick if you don't have Carson Wentz. What are you doing with Jalen Hurts? I mean, how is it a wasted he's pick? Gonna, he's going to sit he on can, your bench. He, he can throw the ball and he can run the can ball. He? So, I mean, he can run it. I don't know that he's that well. Lamar Jackson. Well, but same, Lamar Jackson is, is a is freak. Down the same exact Lamar road. Jackson is a freak, though. You can't tell me that Jalen Hurts runs the ball the same way that Lamar Jackson runs Obviously, the ball. Obviously, he learns it, he runs it a lot closer to that, to um, Cam Newton than Lamar Jackson. But I'm just saying, it's yeah, super. Cam flex. Newton can really Take throw. It it's not. It's not a. It's not a wasted pick. Um, yeah, it a, is if a, it's a, a guy that's sitting is, behind Carson Wentz. Well, for now, we just had the discussion on how some, sometimes, I mean, sure, Wentz could get hurt. Jalen Hurts could be a starter. Maybe Jalen Hurts is sitting on the bench for two years. I guarantee the Eagles hope he's sitting on the bench for two years. Um, but, I mean, statistically speaking, all these running backs and wide receivers are going to fourth round or wasted picks too. So, might as well take a shot on a quarterback and a super flex. Yeah. Ah. I mean, I don't necessarily just, like you said, like I said, if I got Wentz, I'm definitely taking him at the, at the end of the third. And then I could, I could see like, there's not a ton of guys out here. Like I like DeVernay and, and, and Van Jefferson, but I'm okay with, and K, I probably take KJ Hamler over him. Um, and Van, so I, I can see that. I mean, and, he's got and, and Josh Kelly and Eno and but I took Josh Kelly over him here. If, if I had it back, I might, I might take, I might take Jalen hurts. Um, because he is a quarterback and it's super flex. And I like the idea of being able to try to package him up and get a, get a different quarterback. It's, like I said, I, I don't have a ton of faith in him as an NFL prospect. I didn't have a ton of faith in, in as Lamar Jackson as an NFL prospect, but um, there's a completely different dynamic of, of running ability that makes Lamar Jackson's 
lack of being the best passer ever. Fine. Like I just, I don't, I don't think Jalen hurts has it. And that's basically where I'm at with him, but I will, you know, I'm not saying it's a waste of pick your waste. Like you said, Waste to pick at three and the third and fourth round happens a lot. Sometimes you get James Collier. Sometimes you get Aaron Jones. Sometimes, sometimes you get, you get Cooper Cup. Sometimes and, you get Kenny Galladay. And, and then other but times. Most times you get people that are not on your team anymore. And right. very short, short turn. It doesn't take long. And you're like, oh, need somebody right. else because these guys suck. Right. Um, so kind of and then Eason comes up and Eason is kind of on the little bit of the opposite end of that spectrum. I would probably still I would take Kelly and and. um I would definitely take all the guys I just said I would take uh, Hamler and Van Jefferson and DeVernay. Definitely, like, just like I would take all them over Hertz. I'd definitely take them all over Eason. Um, but then after that, after all those guys are gone, I'm fine with taking Eason in the middle of the third round. Um, yeah, I mean, I might even would rather have Eason than Hertz just because – I'm, I might be with you, Jay Wayne. He he might have a chance at, at becoming a starter. Like, he, he does have some good NFL traits, and the arm is pretty good. The problem I saw with him watching a little bit of the tape is that, I mean, he had a super clean pocket there at Washington, and, and, a, and a bunch of the good throws that he had, there was nobody in his face. That offensive line was doing work. And when there was pressure, he he buckled under it, and, and, and he became erratic and careless with the ball and made mistakes. And I'm not sure if that's a super fixable trait, especially taking that to the NFL. So I'm like, I'm definitely not going to reach for Eason, but I feel like there's probably a better opportunity. I mean, I, I don't know. The Eagles took Hurts in in the second round. So obviously they have some sort of plan or idea behind that. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's just, maybe it's just that, that, that having a really good backup is, is a valuable thing enough to, to spend a second round pick on. I don't well, know. Look at, Look at how look at the stats that come out for Josh Allen and how bad these stats these people could come up with for his accuracy and everything else. But yet he wins game. Him, the Bills are winning games with him, mm -hmm. and he's fantasy wise because of his rushing touchdowns. He's one of the best fantasy quarterbacks you can have. One of the best, not the top five, obviously. But Josh Allen is a hot commodity in Superflex and in a startup real quick. I mean, Josh and, Allen ADP wise, DLF. Go back to that. He's top eight. There you go. Exactly. And so like drafted, drafted ADP. Drafted ADP. Yeah. Oh, as a, as like a rookie that's his quarterback. Average, no, no, no. I'm saying that's his average draft position out of all the quarterbacks. He's eight. Out of right now. Go right. Out of year. all the quarterbacks. He's the eighth highest drafted quarterback. Okay. And that, all right. So that's, that's even better than I thought. I thought he was a little bit lower than that. So, but there's stat after stat after stat. If, if you look at his player page on sleeper, it's, Last year, Josh Allen struggled throwing deep. And then yeah. the, the blurb two days before that, last last year, Josh Allen struggled throwing short. And the blurb before that, two days before that, last that last year, Josh Allen couldn't hit a broad side of a fucking barn. Yeah. But they do hate Josh Allen. They do hate – all the stats nerds hate Josh Allen. But you know what he does? He helps his team win, and he scores hellacious flat fantasy points from the quarterback spot. And that's something that Jalen Hurts, I see, I think he could potentially do. So I'm taking Jalen Hurts. He in that doesn't have spot. the arm that Josh Allen has, though. I mean, doesn't might not have that live arm that you need yeah, to throw right. through the seventy-eight I mean, mile an hour snow in in in, in Buffalo. I'm not going to debate. I what think Hurts Jay, has. Jalen Hurts can throw plenty plenty I mean, of football. If 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 why why was there such a drastic change in Alabama when they moved they they had to bench Hurts at Hurts at halftime to go to Tua just to open it up and throw the ball down the field? Like I feel like if he was this decent thrower, they would have opened it up. With him, I you think know? he I threw the ball. He, I think he threw the ball plenty fine at Oklahoma this year. He got uh, a chance but it, to do it. He, he wasn't on the level of the other two guys who just went in the first round. I I, I just didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't the other see two it. Guys I just went one one. Sure, right. I didn't see it at Alabama. Who I didn't both, see it at Oklahoma. Both had a season to play to, to sit he, on the bench. He looks to season. run first. I don't think. I just don't think he has it. And I mean, that's that's just where I'm at with Hurts. But, but I'm not not going to take him. I'm okay with taking him. Um, I just I don't understand what the Eagles are really doing. Because I don't, I'm not sure that he's. I don't think he really has it to be the NFL quarterback. I was, I said the same thing with Lamar Jackson, but this again, is, this is fantastic because this is exactly the same what conversation we have. But Lamar got, Jackson, this is, said, they're not the even. Ravens, I don't know what the Ravens are doing. I don't think they're not even Lamar close Jackson to the same. Well, out of a bar. We, we, we the were, Ravens we were didn't have a quarterback really, we were, and they we weren't debating elite. We weren't debating elite. Lamar Jackson in general. We were talking about Lamar versus Baker and why Baker was such a better mm -hmm. passer and the better nope, prospect he to take. 
I, I oh, I, I still, I still don't think can. he can. Like, the, yes, there's stats that say he can, but it, it, listen, we don't have time to get into all this, and we'll, we'll <laughs> debate it on another show. It's not the exact same argument that we were having about Lamar. It's not the same exact argument. Lamar led the league in touchdown passes last year. Lamar Jackson has some great passing stats, but when you watch the ball games and when it's time to – and when he's behind and he has to do things on his own, it's not there. He doesn't have it. I, I, I don't think Lamar Jackson is going to be this long-lived thing in the NFL, um, but – Jalen Hurts is nowhere near what he is on the ground to open up the easy passing lanes that equates to 40 passing touchdowns from Lamar Jackson. Um, that's just my opinion on the matter. Yes, I was wrong with Lamar Jackson. He's obviously fantastic right now. Like, the, But he also got into a system where they catered everything towards him and everything is built around Lamar Jackson and not a lot of teams in the NFL understand that. He got into the Ravens system. And not and that the Eagles couldn't do that same thing. Th- they certainly could. I just don't I just don't think Hertz is on his level even to, to start off with. Like uh they didn't they didn't have anybody. Like, yeah, they had they had Flacco. They were ready to move on. They drafted old boy at the end of the first round. And well, you knew that the Lamar was gonna get his shot. Like you knew he was gonna get his shot at some point. But I don't feel like Hertz is going to get his shot. Like you don't know that if for the Eagles, I'm t- if the Eagles have their way, they won't. He won't. If the Eagle, if I'm telling you that if Carson Wentz stays healthy, that's all they could ever ask for. But he has been nicked up. And yeah. I mean, I love him as sh- a backup. Love him get his shot while Wentz is hurt. But it's not like they're going to just pass the reins over to Hertz. I didn't say they would. I just, but I just said that when I first started talking about Hertz. All these other quarterbacks, almost every one of those in the top six that Casey read to us 45 minutes ago or an hour ago now, had no shot at being a starter anytime soon. It just you, NFL's a funny game, man. And it's, you just give it some time. Yeah. And in the I, third round of a slip flex draft, I'll take it all day. I, I'm going to be wrong on people just like I'm wrong on everybody else. I don't oh, see it too. with Jalen Hurts. And, yeah, it's okay, fine. you want to say you were right on Lamar Jackson? Yeah, you were right on Lamar Jackson, but it wasn't for the reason that you were thought you were going to be right on Lamar Jackson for. And oh, I, just, I just don't see. Because he set, he just set the NFL rushing mark as a, as a quarterback? I just don't see it with Jalen Hurts. I don't he think he Vic's has record? it between the ears. He almost broke Vic's record in, like, seven games a year before. Right. I mean, I – I'm not hating on Lamar necessarily. I'm just saying I don't think he's a long-term answer for the league. I think I think people are going to figure it out. It's something that they hadn't seen before, and things people catch up. And I don't I don't think when when the screws get down and he has to play an actual NFL style game, he can't do it. Uh, he misses a lot of easy throws. They they built a system around him. It's working well for him. But once people start devising this system, the playoffs haven't been good, and he's looked pretty poor. Yes, the stats are fine in the playoffs just like they are with the passing touchdowns because he was down and getting his ass whipped, and he came back, and then boys were like, all right, here, do, do whatever you need to do, but you're not winning this game. History is yet to be determined. Oh, for sure. And, I, I mean, I, dra- I was wrong about Lamar Jackson the year before. I drafted Lamar Jackson last year, and he won me some money. I'm not saying – like, I'm not against it. I'm just saying, like, I don't see it with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I was wrong with Lamar Jackson. You can you can lean your crutch on that if you want. I just don't think it's the same. I can lean. That's a huge crutch I got to lean against because yeah. we had the same conversation. That's all I'm saying. I, I like Hurts. I like I like I like the, the kid. I like the the man that he is, and I like his chances well, of developing Jay, and being. Jalen Hurts didn't good get pro. benched by or Lamar Jackson didn't get benched by a better player in in Louisville. That's okay. That's okay. He can't. We torched it last year. He was, he was awesome, and he also came in when that better player got hurt and saved the season. So without Jalen Hurts coming in and saving oh, the season, I mean, I, there's, that's one there's, less ring for there's Alabama. Been countless Alabama players who quarterbacks who were non threats who won championships for Alabama because it's a ridiculous team. True. Anyhow, got a little off kilter there. No, no hatred towards Lamar Jackson. I like Lamar Jackson. <laughs> good, good for Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Um, don't draft Lamar Jackson in the top of your super flex draft. That's what I would say. Cause those, oh, definitely do that. Definitely do that. Sure. No chance. That's that's the, the, again with the quarterbacks like a Lamar Jackson. Like when you draft him in the thirteenth round, that's what wins you money. When you draft him in the first round, it's a whole lot harder to win money. Now, if Lamar Jackson stays healthy all year. Yeah, he's gonna. Those he's gonna statements that you just said are you, true. It's harder to win if you take a quarterback first, and but if Lamar Jackson stays healthy, it gets a lot easier. I mean, I'm not taking anybody before Christian McCaffrey's gone, but uh, after Christian McCaffrey and Saquon's gone, I could uh, fair game. Yeah, I mean, there's almost again for me personally, there's almost no circumstances where I'm taking a quarterback in the first round of a super flex startup draft. It's just not happening. 
Let me get um, my hopes. Probably waiting until the fifth. Like I said in the beginning of this, that's where I'm going to target my Carson Wentz's or Russell Wilson if he hangs around, and then I'm going to pick up a Stafford a couple rounds later, and I, I feel really good about my quarterback situation moving forward. That um, super flex tight end premium that even makes brings the tight ends up. Carson Wentz and Russell Wilson work on in the third round. Yeah, yeah. And, and that well, you just got to feel and, it and, out. If and a and bunch of quarterbacks right. go, you got to get one. But 100%. if they're not going, then you can wait. Sometimes you know, Carson Wentz is in time. the sixth round. Sometimes Carson Wentz is in the third round. You exactly. Know, but if, he, to, to, if but all the quarterbacks came, are you running, you got Stafford in the fifth, and Jared Goff in the sixth, and Tannehill in the seventh, and Drew Brees in the eighth. You could if quarterbacks you could, you could are on a run in the league. Then you got to read the room and say, "Hey, I normally wouldn't draft a quarterback this high, but that's those are different circumstances." You got to say, "Here's a run of them. I'm up. I need to take one." Of these quarterbacks exactly um but for the most part and and how a you're just not starting a run standard league right and a standard how it drops off like i think i got i think i'm typically getting carson wentz in the fifth or sixth round of a mock of super flex um all right so there's the rest of these quarterbacks let's finish this thing off because people are like i thought we were talking about a super flex mock <laughs> you're talking about lamar jackson over here welcome to the ff dynasty right jake jake Good from you Four seven. I, I can't argue with it. James Morgan. I don't know anything about James Morgan. I don't really know that much about Anthony Gordon either. Um, but again, you you if it's super flex stab on quarterbacks, that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. I'd probably take Lynn Bowden Jr. over from Morgan and Gordon. Um, but you could get your get yourself a Gardner Minshew right here. Get yourself a Stidham here. Um, you should probably be selling both of those guys in super flex right now, but. Um, you still selected them super late in these drafts just like this. Um, Ryan Finley had a chance last year uh, for you to, for a game or two, for you to move on from that stock and you probably drafted him in the fourth round. Um, so, so every once in a while, guys get their opportunities. Fromm could easily get an opportunity with Josh Allen's athletic ability and how he moves around. Um, Fromm could be starting for two weeks and Fromm managed plenty of games for Georgia. Fromm's beat out Eason, who got drafted from, they kept from around in front of Jason Fields, who's going to be a first round overall pick next year. Uh, so Georgia obviously liked what Fromm could do. You know, I'm not. I, I'm just, Fromm's not fine. Surprised Fromm still has a job at all. So let me right. let me throw something out here real quick that you just mentioned, Casey, and I think I don't think you gave it just enough love. We're talking super flex here. We're talking Stidham. Finley and Stidham both were picked up off of waivers after the four rounds of a 16-team Superflex league last year that we were in. I think you got Finley and I got Stidham. And you had a chance to sell Finley. I have a chance now to, to, to sell Stidham. This is a really good chance to make some, you know, Finley, you've got your opportunity. He, had, he was very, very unlikely to come in there and pull a – Tom Brady or a Dak Prescott. I mean, it's basically a 2% chance to come in there and, and say, oh, this guy's so good, he's about to be a starter. And, you know, Gardner Minshew's about to get another run. But for the most part, you, you've been kind of beating a drum on cash out of these super, super late guys because statistically and historically, the odds are saying you better take what you can get for him now as a profit and, and, and just ring that register. Yeah. Now, if you're ready to win – and Gardner Minshew's your second or third quarterback right now, ride that Gardner Minshew wave into the dirt because he didn't pay anything for him. But if, if you're middle of the pack or whatever, get, get you a pick for or another player for Minshew right now. And maybe maybe in a year or two, you're talking about Minshew like, like you're talking about Lamar Jackson where I'm like, get rid of the guy, do something else, uh, blah, 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 blah. And maybe Minshew's still playing in the league. I, I don't. I think he'll still be playing in the league, but I think he'll probably be more like a backup quarterback at this uh, point i mean obviously finley didn't have finley didn't do too great i mean andy dalton didn't do too great for the Bengals last year either and you know that you hadn't won a game yet you throw finley in there how do you think he's going to do but at this point you're talking about Minshew as a top as a as a much higher as a higher tier than right stidham because we haven't seen anything right. the only thing i know Fair. about stidham is he came in last year when the patriots were covering and threw a pick six on his first <laughs> and cost me a point in the super contest so right that's all I know about Stidham, but I know there's, you know, obviously either the Patriots, A, like him, or B, they're going to ride him to Trevor Lawrence. So, you know, Gardner's coming. We've seen a, we've seen a year out of Gardner, and he averaged like 18 points. Where he's not, where, yeah, points. he's not, he's certainly not a bad player. I'm just not sure if he's a franchise quarterback that 
he, he might be gap quarterbacks or he might be case Keenum. Uh, it's for, all about what, like I just read, I read Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett, Eli Manning. It's only, is the guy good enough to continue playing yeah. ball? Can, right. Will he be starting for a team in right. ever again? And Minshew has really some matters. of it, but Keenum, Keenum was one of those guys who could be like a Minshew who years where he had plenty of juice in startups as getting, being somebody's third or second quarterback to now irrelevant. Yeah. So let's well, not, let's not underestimate Minshew too much. Like this man is crazy. He'll do whatever it takes. Like he, let's not forget, but he didn't bash his own hand with a hammer trying to make the uh, yeah, nine times yeah. to try and get on IR to save himself a year of eligibility only to not go on, on uh, not get a red shirt, uh, a right. medical red shirt, and then end up starting and playing pretty well for them later that year. So I'll be interested to see what happens with Minshew. Part of me thinks is the Jags just know that that coach and the quarterback are both going to be out next year. Let's just, let's just get a good a draft pick as we can. Yeah. And uh, call this thing a wrap. But uh, I don't know. I, I like what you said. You know, if, if if he's your second or third guy and you're trying to win, ride it out. But otherwise, you probably should move on. All right. Yeah. You guys got anything else? We're way too long on this uh, thing. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Um, sorry that you that you, we had to bring in that Lamar Jackson and all that sidebar in there. I know we got a little distracted, but it's kind of yeah, what like we Jay do. said. Welcome to the FF. Yeah. Honest. What can you do? If you're mad about it, you know, hit us with a comment. It's all good. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Thumbs up and uh, definitely hit subscribe. If you made it this deep into the show, you obviously like what you're hearing. We appreciate you sticking around. And uh, till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasty. Peace.